Everyone, this is Killshot from 99 Gaming's The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 1, Red Eye Rick Explained. Warnings will contain predictions, spoilers, and even comic book spoilers. If you're not into that, turn away right now. You have been warned. We're going to go through the path between wrath and mercy, and yes, we're going to have to go back and revisit some of Negan's evil deeds. I know that's a dark place for a lot of different people, but we have to set the stage to find out what started all of this. It could have been justified, but we're going to follow all the way through from the beginning to where we think the season is going to end. And here it is. This was probably Rick's lowest point. You see Carl on the ground. Uh, Rick had a rough time of it. Negan strutting away. But Negan didn't stop there. He actually tortured some of his own people. Dwight has gotten the iron, and he makes Dwight pull out the iron, put it on Mark's face, and then, of course, the epic scene where he had to stab Spencer, and he did it in front of everyone. And then the season kind of ended with Rick. This is Rick's beginning of his wrath. It's where Rick said, I am going to kill you. Uh, Negan swung the bat. Shiva did save the day. And then Rick is revisiting the past right here, looking over the graves of Glenn and Abraham. And I think that's when he understands that he's torn between what he thinks he has to do and what might be the greater good. So we start out the season, and Rick is giving the speech. He's trying to motivate everybody. And that's tough as a leader because in this situation, he knows he's leading people into their own death. And it could be for his own personal gain. Here you can see he's looking back. He's struggling with it. And even while the speech is going on, Maggie and Ezekiel, he looks over the clearing. This is probably the area where Glenn and Abraham met their demise a little bit later on we see the things that are most important to rick we saw judith we saw michonne and we saw carl here he has to leave him but ultimately he pushes himself forward knowing there's going to be some sacrifice to get to this point he sees negan up there he takes a few shots he does get one off looks like he wounds him on the leg but he didn't finish the deal remember the rv blew up Negan hides behind the RV. Rick's trying to get the killing blow there. And Father Gabriel steps in and slows him down a little bit. So Rick has to transition to plan B, which is maybe blackmail Negan in the future. Taking these Polaroid pictures could be a way to take leverage away from him. So we know that later on in the season, that in, according to the comic book, Rick and Negan are going to have this epic face-to-face -face showdown. Rick cuts his throat, and I think that is really the start of his mercy. This is where Rick turns around. I would assume that Negan is laying on the ground at this point, and Rick is looking for a reason not to kill him. He sees the stained glass that we saw the reflection. You can see kind of the red eyes. Some people thought he was bit by a walker or he's crying over someone he lost. I think that Rick is struggling because here he even manufactures a smile, which is the hardest thing to do. And he says, my mercy prevails over my wrath right there in that moment. So I think it's the decision to actually save and spare Negan. And this is where we begin the transition into Rick's mercy. Rick is going to have to make a decision that a lot of us wouldn't be able to make. I mean, this is his arch enemy. He's seen all the devastation at Negan's call. So he's laying right there. He's already cut his throat. He could finish it once and for all. He has the broken leg, which is going to fall in suit with the cane we see a little bit later on. And he decides to take Negan back and lock him up in the jail cell that Morgan built. We saw the jail cell a little bit earlier, so it was a preview. It does fall in line with the comics once again. And this is where the time skip is going to take place because a lot of people do not like this, and there's a lot of chaos that happens in the comic. Uh, Michonne decides to leave because of it. Of course, they weren't in a relationship. And then we get to Old Man Rick, which is the future. It's kind of his utopia, and all these clues out there are definitely following the comic book. Rick looks over. He got to oversleep. Uh, all these things that he wasn't able to enjoy when the war was going on. You can see Carl. You can also see Michonne. And there's Rick holding the cane. So it definitely has the broken leg. He walks with the limp. He gets to see Judith grow up. So those are all positive positives in his life and then he gets to walk out and we see his utopia there's the owl over there and it's just like little house on the prairie this is the perfect situation and at the very end of the episode we're reminded once again that all this can't happen without all-out war so it goes back to the scene where rick says we've already won he has to give this epic speech just get everybody to rally around him but there is going to be a lot of death that has to take place before Rick ultimately gets to that final destination. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments below. Who do you think will be sacrificed this season so Rick can get to the utopia and old man Rick? My name is Killshot. Give this video a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.